Well, hello and uh, welcome to this video. I thought I'd do some videos just to give an idea of, uh, it's a bit behind the scenes, but what I do with Photoshop is the purpose of this one. Now, um, I definitely will flag that I'm not a Photoshop expert. Um, there are probably Photoshop experts who, as I go through this, will be sitting there with their head in their hands wondering what I'm doing, but all I can say is this works for me. Now, um, I do know that Photoshop is one of those things that puts off a lot of people when it comes to post-processing, but the key is that pretty much every image you see these days will have been post-processed in some way. And I think it's very important to have an understanding of what you can do in post-processing because that determines your photography, what you do when you're at the capturing stage. And the important thing is that there may be images that you shoot and you capture that you think, uh, I don't know about that, I think I might delete it. Well, don't, because once you begin to understand what you can do in post-processing, uh, it means that you can do an awful lot with those images. So let's just jump in. So I'm on Photoshop, um, I'm on Creative Cloud. So this is, um, where are we? We're in August 2020, so this is the current version. And what I'm going to do is just open up a file. So we'll just hit file and open. And this this particular file is a series of images I took in uh, South Africa. And um, what we'll do is just pick one, almost at random. Uh, in fact, there's some from uh, Botswana now that I look at it. So this was all in January, and I tend to, again, a lot of people criticize, I tend to um, file my images and put them together by date and um, that isn't necessarily the best thing to do but uh, you know you have to find a system that works for you and um, I will say that this does work for me so we'll just jump down and look we've got some um, how about this so here's a wildebeest or GNU depending on where you're from so let's just open this one up now I'm picking this up pretty much at random and this is what we've got so the first thing I'm going to do, so you can see we can open at this stage. So what I'm going to do is just go to the optics first of all, and you can see if I hit remove chromatic distortion, sorry, chromatic aberration, and also use the profile. Now, um, um, I believe, because I can't quite remember setting this up now, that um, Adobe will sense the, um, or from the metadata you have in your files, so the metadata is simply a term for um, some of the additional information that the camera will record. It's got the lens type I was using, and then there's a profile of that lens within um, Adobe, and this um, simply allows um, Adobe to correct, the software to correct for any distortion put in by the lens. So that's done there, and what I'm going to do is just now open that file. So here we are, we've opened. Now, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what's presented by Photoshop, but I'm going to draw your attention up here. And that's this histogram and this basically shows you what part of the image so this is going from um, light to dark possibly the other way around <laughs> um, dark to light and it shows you where the information is in the uh, the image and so it basically means that if you have these areas here with no data um, that simply means there's a, a part of the color spectrum think of it that way which has nothing in it so all you're doing is taking up space that you could otherwise be using now a way we can deal with that is just go to image adjustments and levels and here we'll have a better view of that histogram and here you can see there's absolutely nothing so if i just pull that in this top marker you'll see that the image begins to get a bit darker there you get a bit more contrast and that means that what we're doing now is that we're only using the part of the file that actually has information in it now that's a very simple manual adjustment you can also hit auto which does something slightly differently but if you want to do it quickly auto is a great way to go on this so quite often i will just hit auto it will adjust the um, exposure um, and the light spread on that image before we go in and edit. So let's hit OK. Um, don't worry about it. What I'm going to do is just change my crop setting and turn it off because I tend to have the crop on there for Instagram or things like that. Now, what we'll now do is go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And again, um, what you can do if you wish is just to auto because it gives you some starting points. And here you can see we've begun to add a bit more details. Now I do remember this. This was a Sunday morning. 
in South Africa and it had been raining, so it was a little bit drizzly. Um, the light, we didn't have strong sunlight. There was kind of mixed clouds, so it was a softer light and it actually wasn't bad. So this is what I refer to as a fairly flat image. The color is fairly even. And what we've done in that first step is to just put more um, give ourselves access to the color. So we've taken out parts of the file which are simply not doing anything. Now what I'm going to do is go into basic and this these are the basic adjustments. Now by hitting auto what it tends to do um, sometimes it will change the exposure. At the moment I'm okay with that because if anything that was slightly overexposed. Uh, what I do tend to do though is just reduce the whites first of all and the highlights because I like to tweak those in another setting. The other thing that I know auto does, it tends to push up the vibrance. So again, I'll bring that down. Now again, I've still got a very flat um, image here. Um, shadows have been, so it's lightened the shadows quite a bit as well. So I'll just pull that back somewhere in the middle. What I'm now going to do, jump down to curve. And this just allows me to change the exposure in different parts of the image, so the darker to light parts of the image. So on my highlights, first of all, if I just um, adjust those. The thing about the highlights is I'm really looking at putting, what, I, what I'm trying to do is put a bit of depth as that image begins to come out of the screen. That's what works for me. So here by doing a little bit of highlighting, that's beginning to pull that image out. Lights may or may not be useful. Sometimes I wind it down because I want to get more contrast because whites, uh, the lights do tend to wipe out a lot of the color. Um, so I'm going to just reduce that a little bit. And then I'm also going to put the darks down and make it slightly darker. Shadows I'm fairly happy with for now. Um, but again, the point about this is you can change the mood of the image. Now I'm going to hop back to basics, push the contrast a little bit, and then I tend to use a little bit of saturation. And that for me is beginning to make that image a bit better. Now I'm also very careful about not overdoing it. And the guide for me is actually the green in the grass because pretty much all of us have access to green grass and we know what green grass should look like. So if I put too much saturation in, this will look wrong because the grass becomes almost luminescent and these, obviously the colors on the animal are way too bright. So I'll put a little bit and I tend to push it to the grass starts to come out but not too much. I might add a little bit of vibrance in there as well. Now a tip if you're using skies or sea, vibrance will tend to bring out, bring out the blues. So if something's looking too blue, bring the vibrance down and that will generally do it. And then just a tad more contrast perhaps. I might now lighten up shadows because I just want to, I'm tending to look at, I don't have a great shot of this animal's eye but I just want that to um, come out a little bit more. So that's not too bad. So if I OK that, you can see the difference in just those few steps. And <clears throat> for me, that's a better image. Whether I'd use it is another question because it doesn't, it's not particularly punchy, but it does give you an idea of what you can do with an image that was pretty washed out initially. And um, uh, with a few adjustments, it's taken me a few minutes to talk through all of that, but that would normally take me no more than two minutes to do what I've described to you. So there you go.